Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Raising Fortress. Let's look at Psalm chapter 18. Psalm 18. From verse 1. You may need to stand. Let us, let's, let's honor God as we read this scripture. From just verses 1 and 2. It says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge your sovereignty. I know that in the beginning you spoke and your speaking brought forth everything required for life and the man you made you made in your image and likeness so that he too can speak and when you raise a prophet it's just for this reason to speak daddy i speak in full awareness and in total alignment with you and what you see concerning every soul here that i will not speak my feeling i will not speak my disposition i will not speak my memory that i will speak Speak what you speak right now. That my voice will be the re-echoing of your eternal voice. Oh, Daddy, every cedar of Lebanon in somebody's life, as you speak through me, let your cedars be wasted in the name of Jesus. And let your word go like thunder. And let things be shattered. Create pattern out of confusion. Impose order in the middle of chaos and let life emerge again. Yeah. I see that at the end of this speaking, life will emerge again. Yeah. I say life will emerge again in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Tell seven people, life will emerge again. Life will emerge again. Tell seven people, life will emerge. Life will emerge. If you have done so, you may be seated. After seven people, life will emerge again. Glory. I love it. We're talking about fortress. Psalm 18 is a very personal psalm. It re-echoes what David sings about in 2 Samuel. David is a very personal person. Two people in the Bible that I know they talk too much about themselves. Number one is Paul in the New Testament. The second person in the Old Testament is David. Read through everything that talks about David. His psalms a personal psalm. Let me tell you something. If you have been broken and you don't talk about it, there's something wrong with you. If you have been blessed and you don't talk about it, there's something wrong with you. God leaves a personal mark on you. So that you can make God a personal issue. God leaves a personal mark on you so that you can make God a personal issue. The difference between Paul and every other person is the personality. Talks about his weakness, talks about his boasting. He talks about the thorn in my flesh and how I cry and ask God, take this from me. And God will say, shh. My grace enough for you and all that paul makes it so personal so now let's go and draw you into the arena of david into his personal story without the personal without taking god personally we will not have the psalm every single psalm is a personal experience a personal grief a personal celebration a personal joy a personal personal thing that's why we have the psalm. You cannot be a songwriter if you are not a personal person. I challenge you to take God personal 
and you will have personal story. If you fight, let it be known that you were fighting because of God. If you have issue, let it be that you had issue because of God. Take God personal. The end of it, God will give you a personal story. You see, David did not just wake up one day to have eternal dynasty. It's because he took God personal. He told Saul, I will not touch you because the anointing of God is on you. If God doesn't want you alive, let him be the one to kill you, but I will not kill you. He took it personal to God personal because of the anointing. When he was rested, he said, here I am resting and at, at home in a beautiful house, but the ark of the Lord is in a, a tent outside. I will make my God a living place. And God said, you? No. But because of this, guess what I will do? Your son will sit on your throne and your kingdom will last forever. Because you take me personal, I will take you personal. From that moment till now, that word has not been broken. The Jesus that we call the Christ is called the son of David. When we go to heaven, the one who sits on the throne of heaven as the son of God at the right hand of the father is the son of David. Forever, Jesus is God and man because he brought God into man and he came as the son of David to fulfill a promise made by God to a man who took him personal. I dare you to take God personal and God will leave a personal signature in your generations. Stand up and lift up your tongue and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decide today, I choose today to take you personal. No, speak it out. Make it a personal confession and make it a confession. I take you personal. I take you personal. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be said, I agree with you in my generation. There will be personal believers. In my generation, there will be people who take the things of God personal. He said, I love you, O oh Lord, my strength personal. My strength. Not our strength. My strength. He said, the Lord is my, my rock. <laughs> I will tell you a few things in the coming days. My fortress and my how many my four minds <laughs> my strength my rock my fortress my deliver my God number five is my rock number six in whom I take refuge he is my shield servant and the horn of my salvation it my stronghold nine multiple my my rest to power nine in two verses of a psalm my rest to power nine in psalm 23 it says the lord is my shepherd oh <laughs> personal Until you get to the place of personal encounter in God. God is a story. And a philosophy. A theology that can be disputed. Issue of argumentation. <laughs> it has to be personal. If he has healed you personally, it's not doctrinal, it's experience. If he has delivered you from sin, it's not doctrinal, it's not subject to debate. You know, St. Paul told Timothy, he said, don't get involved with argument no, over useless issues of doctrine. No. <laughs> personal encounter, personal experience, until you have experienced him personally, is the God of somebody. When you have experienced him, he's your God. Many people serve the God of their father. They serve the God of their pastors. The God of their church. The God of this commission. Have you heard something like that? Uh, when I hear it, I'm careful. The God of this commission. I want to hear your God. 
If the God of this commission is your God, good enough. But if it's just the God of this commission, you come to meet him when you come to this commission. And when you go, <laughs> that, that Tuesday, the God of this commission is a lie. You wake up one day and you call the God of this commission. You say, I, want, I have been waiting to be your God. There are certain things that can only happen when he is your God. David says, my, my. So when we are talking about fortress, it's a personal experience. Fortress is not church. Fortress is not ministry. Fortress is not anything. Fortress is personal experience of God. David says, my, my. Let's go back there. So the first thing in raising the fortress is my. Tell somebody, my. The my direction, the personal dimension. Until you have God as my God, which is a permitted to play with you. Kick you as football in the night. You wake up, you, you, you slept on the bed, but you wake up from the floor. Yesterday, they, they caught you this side. They said, there's nothing left in this side. So tomorrow, or today, they caught you this side. So tomorrow, you can actually expect where they will cut you. You anticipate. Uh, will they cut me in front or in the back? Man, Zumbo, Abirogi, so you see. I told you it is in the front. They will cut me today. They have cut me in the front. <laughs> because God is not your God. When God is my God, no witch, no wizard, no demon, no demoness, no devil. God is your fortress. Lift up your hand and say, God is my God. Let's talk about fortress. Fortress, according to a dictionary, a place that is protected against attack. So, one basic thing in fortress is protection. Tell somebody protection. Basic, ordinary, common place, surface, dictionary, definition of fortress is protected area. A protected area. When you go to any, because of the security issue in Nigeria and in most places, you go to any area that a, a big personality, senior personality, either in government or in rulership or whatever, even economic leadership, where the person is living, you will see a form of fortress. You will see backs, sacks of maybe sand piled up. It is a sort of fortress. It offers protection. Should there be an invading armed attack, somebody can lie low and shoot and be protected. Then the sandbag will take the bullet. That's a fortress. So now you already know what a fortress is. Go around town. The government house has fortress. If you go to places, you, you will see places that you may not even understand that people are monitoring you, but you don't see them. That's a fortress. That means if you are coming to attack, people see you, but you don't see them. You shoot, doesn't enter, because there is protection. So fortress offers protection. Fortress is about fortification. Fortification. From fortification, your fortress, fort. Stronghold. Now, stronghold serves different purposes. It serves as a place of defense, protection, shield, refuge. It also serves as a place of attack. When you have a stronghold, when you are in a stronghold, you are protected and then you are positioned to attack. Am I talking to somebody? Imagine the, the fortress we are talking about at the gates of one senior military man. The sandbags that will be raised. Or even at checkpoints on the road. You see those things will be raised. When somebody is there 
there is defense, there is protection, there is, is taking refuge there. But it, it's also a place of attack. While you are coming, you are just walking, walking, walking. Bam! Because you are not protected and you shoot, the person goes down. So the person is defended and the person is positioned to attack you. While I was looking at the scripture for this revelation, God spoke to me about destroying the fortress of the enemy. Until you can identify the fortress, the stronghold of the enemy around your life, you will never go far. Because the fortress of the enemy is where the enemy hides to launch attack. And when you pray, Holy Ghost fire, you know, enter. That's why some people, they say, I shout the Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. It doesn't mean anything. I say, I try to call Jesus, Jesus. It doesn't mean anything. There are some people you call Jesus, it doesn't mean anything. That means there is a stronghold protecting the evil one against the effect of the name Jesus in your life. So life is about fortification. How fortified are you? Our ancestors understood this. And they had different forms of charms. This, they, they wore things around them. When a child was growing up, they would tie things around their waist, tie things around their neck. These were fortifications to protect them, to serve a stronghold where their souls take refuge, were defended, and they could do anything. So those who are charmed, those who have charms and all that, you, you try them, you don't hurt them, but they try you, they hurt you because they are protected. But the real fortification is in God. Shout hallelujah. Okay, let's look at the understanding from the Bible of fortification or fortress. The word in Hebrew, mesuda. Mesuda. Fortress means mesuda in Hebrew. And it means one of the things that is revealed through the dictionary, Hebrew dictionary, defining the word fortress is inaccessible place inaccessible a place that is inaccessible so fortress is inaccessible place a place that another person does not have access to am i talking to somebody so fortress that means the fortress of the enemy against somebody is where you don't have access to you may know that attack is coming from here. You want to go there. You don't have access to that place. You may hear a voice, but you don't know where it comes from. You don't have access. So fortress is inaccessible place. Because it is inaccessible, whoever is there is protected, is defended, is strong. That is why David says, my my strength he calls god my strength he says the lord my rock when you talk about strength when you talk about rock these are different ways of referring to one thing my fortress and my deliverer it means god is referring to david as my inaccessible place a place where i am my finance is, my health is in that place. My wealth is in that place. My marriage is in that place. And it's not accessible to others. There are many marriages that are in the open field. Anything can happen. There are many families in the open field. Anybody can walk in and pluck something. A field that is not fenced round. Am I talking to somebody? There are people, their health is in a public place, public domain. Anybody can enter and defecate. Somebody can relieve himself in somebody's health because it's open. That's why you hear of demonic either relations, neighbors, sometimes even house help. Who live with somebody and mess up somebody's life? In those cases, you are dealing with a life that has no defense, no fortress. That means the life is accessible. 
accessible to the marine, accessible to witchcraft power, accessible to human malicious intention. There are people, no matter what you try, you know, enter. Why? They are inaccessible. I want you to pay attention to this definition of fortress. A fortress is a dimension of inaccessibility. That means if you place your life in the fortress, if you place your finance in the fortress, waste does not have access. Attack does not have access. There are people you see them, they stand. It's not as if things are not against them, but you know, enter. Am I talking to somebody? Tell somebody, you know, enter. Let me tell you, it's not, you are not only one who sees bad dreams. There are people with terrible bad dreams. They wake up, you know, enter. They just wake up, the first thing they say, you know, enter. But there are some people, once they see bad dream, that day is a bad day. Ah, on you want to be? And they, they will not get out of the house until they call every prophet, every prayer warrior, everybody. If you see what I saw today, I say I don't see. <laughs> get there. But there's somebody who wakes up from a bad dream. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Is a stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I be afraid? That means in no enter. Tell three people around you, in no enter. Tell another three people from today, in no go enter. If you want to give a clap of fame unto the Lord, you give and shout because Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. So, when you see people who stand in the face of issue, it's not as if they are not attacked. It's because their life is inaccessible. Their destiny is inaccessible. Let me tell you, I don't worry about what people say as long as I'm in the fortress. I don't care about what people do as long as I'm in the fortress. I don't care about people's expectations and wishes. What I am bothered about, my preoccupation is my place in the fortress. For the place, the fortress gives me inaccessible place of rest. Glory. So fortress is a place of strength. David says you are my strength. Fortress is the place of strength. Fortress is the place of refuge. Where you take cover. A place of safety in the, in the storm. Fortress is a place of advantage. Oh, I love this one. Fortress is a place of advantage. If you go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. Verse 6 of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 6. The king and his men marched to Jerusalem to attack the Jebusite who lived there. Jerusalem is a mount. You see, as mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. So Jerusalem is originally a mount, a mountain. The place of the Jebusites. The Jebusites were... One of the, 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 the tribes, the people, the aborigines, the natives that were not driven away in the time of Joshua. They fought, but they could not. Why? Because they dwelt on the mountain, in the fortress, and they had advantage. Fortress gives you advantage. Advantage is being ahead, having an edge. Advantage. Tell somebody advantage. Life has to do with advantage. When you are writing a business proposal and you are competing for a contract with somebody whose brother will be the one to access you, the person already has advantage. Am I talking to somebody? 
why people join cults, they want to have advantage. Why certain people join political party, they want to have advantage. It's not because they care about you. So people join some churches, not because they want salvation, advantage. We have to be very careful when evangelism is now more about church rather than Christ. It's satanic. It becomes issue of human advantage. That means attention is no longer drawn to the Savior. It's drawn to the club that carries the name of the Savior. Jesus Christ says, on the last day, people shall say, I used to do this. I said, get out. I don't know you. It is, three. it is real. Be careful. If you are joining a church, if you are in a place, even as a worker, to have an advantage in order to get married, in order to be seen, in order to be known, to have connection, is satanic. It is the same tendency that takes people to cult. That means for you, church is a cult, not salvation. To fortress is advantage. When you are, if, when you are in an in inaccessible place, your health is there, your wealth is there, your strength is there, you have advantage over the enemy. You have advantage over witches and wizards. You have advantage over Satan and darkness. You have an edge. You are on top of your game. You are ahead. Steps ahead of the enemy. Before he strikes, he has missed you. You have moved on before he arrives. Am I talking to somebody? Fortress gives you advantage. And David is talking about God. That means God gives you advantage. Now, this is the narrative of Grace Family. I will preach about this every day. My generation must know that when you know God, you have the greatest advantage. Until you know it, you have not yet known anything. Until you know that having God as your God, like David, you can say, my God means my advantage. Tell somebody, my God is my advantage. My and you must know it. If you can know God as my God, the moment is my God, it becomes my advantage. Because it says, I will be your God and you will be my people. It means I take your case personal. When he was fighting with Pharaoh, he denied Pharaoh of succession. The firstborn of Pharaoh was taken. Because Pharaoh was taking, was touching my, my people. Those who enjoyed divine advantage. Joseph was imprisoned, but he rose from the prison to the palace because he enjoyed divine advantage. Because when God is your God, every fall, is a rising. Am I talking to somebody? When God is your God, every fall is a rising. And so when people they are saying there is a, a casting down, there is another voice, shh, is a rising. When you have God, you have the greatest advantage. Inaccessible place. I speak in the name of Jesus. By the administration of grace, you will locate your inaccessible place of dwelling. Yeah. I speak in the name of Jesus. From now, you will be comfortable in God. Yeah. You will be comfortable in God. Yeah. From today, you will begin to enjoy divine advantage. Yeah. I speak upon every child of God that has been harassed, hunted, and haunted. I say in the name of your by divine advantage by the God who visited Egypt and wrote his signature in Egypt. By the God who visited the fire of the king and there was a fourth man. I speak you have advantage and those who are currently playing advantage against you they will consult you to find out how did you do it. When God wants to make you a consultant in matters of advantage, he puts you in a terrible situation. And he causes people to mock you. 
only for them to eat their word. Ah, if there is a child of God standing here and there are people mocking you, they shall eat their word in the name of Jesus. I said they shall eat their word. They shall swallow their words. Because my God is the God of advantage. Daniel had advantage in Babylon. I don't care what office. I don't care where you are. I don't care who is against you. I don't care who has the upper hand. By the God I serve, he will turn things around. In Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. You may live among lions, but they don't have access to your soul. You may live among devourers, but their teeth cannot devour you. Why? Because you are inaccessible. Let me tell you the inaccessibility I'm talking about is not a physical thing. You can live in a bad neighborhood, but criminals cannot see you. What wasted your father may still be seeing you, but cannot touch you. Why? Because of inaccessibility that gives you divine advantage. I provoke divine advantage in your life. I provoke divine advantage in your life. I provoke divine advantage in your marriage. Who told you you need to know the president to succeed? Who told you you need to have a father to succeed? If God is your God and you can say, My God, that gives you advantage. To succeed in life, you don't need too many things and too many people. You need divine advantage. That's the fortress. Glory to God. Few things. A fortress is a place of advantage. I've said that. A fortress is a place of defense. I've said that. A fortress is a place of salvation. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run to it and is, they are safe. So, the fortress is a place of salvation. Salvation means you are free. You are free, taken from something. So when you run to the fortress, whatever that was pursuing you, you will stand and pant. <coughs> worry, I am there. It's a good word and worry. You see, the temptation of Satan every day is to tell you, good word and worry. Worry means come out into immorality. If you are a girl, show me what you have. If you are a boy, if you are a man, you are a man. And you say, I'm a man. You come out into immorality. Now you lose your place of inaccessibility. From that moment, there is access. Sin gives enemy access. Sin breaks your inaccessible place. And renders you accessible to the eyes of evil. They can now see you. They can now touch you. They can now map you and predict you, and monitor you, and limit you, and cause you to stand. I will keep telling you, whatever sin is in your, that is working in your life is the greatest problem you have. You don't have any problem with a witch. God is not in the business of killing witches. Oh. No. God is not in the business of killing witches. He's in the business of saving witches. He wants witches to be saved. How will they be saved? When they encounter a man who is too much, and they have tried and tried and tried down, they know whatever they are serving is a lie. And they'll come and tell you, wherever you have been going to take me there, I have encountered a bigger power. That's God wants. So if all your prayers, let them fall down and die like me. Now if I raise a prayer, let all witches fall down and die. You see people, they will dance. Duokpa, duokpa, duokpa. That's traditional, traditional society prayer. Native, native prayer. Native prayer, not Christian prayer. God wants to save witches, not to kill witches. He says, he prepares a table before me in the very sight of the enemies. The issue of God is that he wants you to live in the fortress, the inaccessible place, where witches, witches they not like you. You have a neighbor who doesn't like you but cannot stop you. 
You have a colleague in the office that does not want your good, but he keeps hearing your testimony every time. Multiply your testimony and let your enemy know there is a God that makes you inaccessible. Glory to God. Say glory to God. When you know Jesus, look at, look at Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you die and your life is now in Second Samuel. The first thing that David did was to destroy, to bring down, to overtake the fortress of the Jebutized. Your own fortress is not safe until the fortress of the enemy is destroyed. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a Covenant Partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenit Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101-42-978-63. For inquiries, please call 081-804-33-225 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.